Welcome to this episode of the Above the Clouds. Today we will be looking at four verses that give the sum and substance of devotional life. They appear in the sixth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, once Giriraj Maharaj visited a wealthy Gujarati businessman in, a, in his massive mansion in Mumbai and in the course of their conversation uh, Mr. Mehta uh, presented four verses which uh, the followers of Vallabhacharya consider uh, the essence of their philosophy. Uh, when Giraj Maharaj heard these verses they really appealed to him and uh, when he came back to the temple he just rushed up to Prabhupada and told him uh, about his talk with Mr. Mehta. So Srila Prabhupada mm, just mentioned to the bookshelf uh, and told uh, Giriraj Maharaj that he should take the sixth canto of the Bhagavatam and read the translations and purports and also the Sanskrit of these four verses. And you will find it quite revelatory <laughs> what you will uh, learn there. So Giraj Maharaj uh, uh, started with verse 24. Mm, it describes Viritasura, uh, who was actually wanting to end his life by the hands of Indra. He was a great devotee but in the body of a demon uh, and Indra uh, slowly, slowly and gradually found out my opponent is actually not a demon. Um, in his heart he is a great devotee and he was hesitant to um, throw the thunderbolt. So Vritasura thought to himself, how can I motivate this rascal Indra, who's seeing everything materially? He will not help me to end my demoniac life now. Instead, I will make a request at the lotus feet of the Lord personally. At that time, the Lord appeared in his meditation and said, Very soon, Rita, I will bring you to my sight. Please ask for a boon. So Rita starts with his first prayer. Aham haritava padaika mula, etc. O my Lord, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, will I again be able to be a servant of your eternal servants? who find shelter only at your lotus feet? O oh Lord of my life, may I again become their servant, so that my mind may always think of your transcendental attributes. My words always glorify those attributes, and my body always engage in the loving service of your Lordship. So he wants uh, three blessings. May my mind remember you, Lord of my life. May my words sing your qualities. And may my body engage in your service, like massaging your feet, fanning you, and giving you betel nut. So in the purport, Prabhupada says, this verse gives the sum and substance of the devotional life. One must first become a servant of the servant of the servant of the Lord. Mm. Then mm. Uh, uh, Krishna, uh, who hears the prayer of Rita, may test him in order to see how serious he really is. So he says, Krishna says to Vidasura, 
Amrita, I give you all results uh, of this world, including Swaga, and even liberation from this world. Please take these other things. Amrita, however, shakes his head and emphatically refuses. No, no, no! Please no. in separation from you, my life airs are burning. How then will Swaga make me happy? But when I meet you, I will attain the three blessings I mentioned in the previous verse. You know, um, mind, words and body engaged in Krishna's service. So this is what Vrita says. Nana kaprishtam nachaparameshtyam, etc. Oh my Lord, source of all opportunities. I do not desire to enjoy in Dhruvaloka the heavenly planets or the planet where Lord Brahma resides, nor do I want to be the supreme ruler of all the earthly planets or the lower planetary systems. I do not desire to be master of the powers of mystic yoga, nor do I want liberation if I have to give up your lotus feet. Yes, he says like uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj, when one is burning with a desire for Krishna, how will a garland make one happy? A garland seems to be like fire on the body. It is not of interest. Mm. Uh, so, uh, Rita continues saying, although I strongly long for you, attaining you depends solely on you. And then Vrita gives three examples. Ajata paksha eva mataram kaga O lotus-eyed Lord, as baby birds that have not yet developed their wings, always look for their mother to return and feed them. As small calves tied with the ropes await anxiously the time of milking, when, when they will be allowed to drink the milk of their mothers, or as a morose wife whose husband is away from home always longs for him to return and satisfy her in all respects, I always yearn for the opportunity to render direct service unto you. Prabhupada says, a pure devotee always yearns to associate personally with the Lord and render service unto him. The examples given in this regard are most appropriate. A small baby bird is practically never satisfied expect, except when the mother bird comes to feed it. In the same way, a small calf is not satisfied unless allowed to suck the milk from the mother's udder. And a chaste, devoted wife, whose husband is away from home, is never satisfied until she has the association of her beloved husband. You may ask why Vritasura gives three examples uh, that illustrate how much he yearns for the Lord. Uh, the reason is that he is not satisfied until he comes to the third. See, in the first and second example, um, it's about the baby birds who want protection um, uh, from owls by their mother and who want the mother to bring small bucks and so on. Mm -hmm. There is the, the baby bird wants something. It wants the gifts of the mother. Uh, maybe even more than the mother uh, uh, herself. In the same way, uh, 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 the calf 
he moves forward to drink the milk from the udder of the mother. Uh, uh, that's a little bit more intimate. Uh, here, uh, Rita prays for uh, the experience of Krishna's sweetness. But again, it's not Krishna. It's not the mother bird or the mother cow which is uh, of interest. It, it, it's uh, 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 therefore Vrita Sura needs a third example. He says, I wish to serve you with all my senses like the wife, her husband who came back from distant lands. Mm, she is morose because of affection and disturbed to be, uh, due to being separated from her husband. But when he returns, she will make her husband happy and thus become fulfilled also. Mm, yes, so in the same way, Vrita waits for Krishna and wants to serve him only. Uh, he's not uh, bewildered by only wanting the gifts of Krishna. He wants Krishna. But as Vrita Sura prays like this, deep humility comes over him. He thinks, how can such a low rascal as myself attain such a good fortune? Let me remain in this world, but let me have friendship with the devotees of the Lord, not to persons who are attached to their bodies, children, houses and wives. And he says, O oh my Lord, my master, Mamottama Shloka Janeshu Sakyam Samsara Chakre Brahmata Svakarma Bhi. Oh my Lord, my master, I'm wandering through out this material world as a result of my fruitive activities. Therefore, I simply seek friendship in the association of your pious and enlightened devotees. My attachment to my body, wife, children and home is continuing by the spell of your external energy, but I wish to be attached to them no longer. Let my mind, my consciousness and everything I have be attached only to you. Yes, as long as we go in this, throughout this material world, as long as we go mm, through our lives, meeting happiness and distress, uh, they are bound to come. Mm, uh, there is only one safe place that is the association of Krishna's devotees. In that association, the consciousness can, can turn to Krishna. And in that association, an inclination is born to become attached to Krishna and serve him. So this is a very mm, uh, much to be learned from these four beautiful verses of Vrita. As you, you have listened to this above the clouds, maybe mm, you want to turn to the Bhagavatam mm, and reread mm, with a complete uh, purpose these four verses mm, uh, uh, from, chapter, uh, from the sixth canto. And after you have read them, Please say your own prayer, which is coming in the consciousness uh, that is mm, inspired by hearing the words of this great devotee. Thank you very, very much. See you soon for the next Above the Clouds. Hare Krishna.